Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're an early retirement, debt, and mortgage-free couple living in the Hudson Valley area of New York. And our channel basically shows you how to live a full, abundant life while spending less money. And today's video, we're going to step back in time a little bit to when the holidays were a little slower, a little calmer, a little more focused on family and friends and gathering, more so than the commercialism that has taken over the holidays of today. We need to remember right now, times are different. Prices out there are really high. Everything is climbing, but we're not going to keep dwelling on that. We can't. We have to figure out ways to go on, enjoy life, manage our money, and still have a beautiful old-fashioned style holiday season. We have to remember sometimes we compete with ourselves. We think back of what we have accomplished in the past as far as how many gifts we've bought or how many cookies we've baked, how many different types of food we've served at each meal. We don't have to compete with ourselves. We're not only trying to not keep up with the Joneses, but we also can cut ourselves a little bit of slack as well. Just sit back, relax, and let us share some of our old-fashioned, cozy holiday ideas with you. The first thing we want to start with is a simple gift that you can put together for anyone. This is a great hostess gift. This is a great gift to just have in the home in case somebody stops by with a gift for you and you want to bless them with a little something. So let's turn around and see what we put together. Another old fashioned trait that Paul and I adhere to is, if we are going to someone's home, we never go empty handed. And it's not a big glamorous gift, but it is a gift to say thank you for having us, thank you for opening your home, thank you for sharing a meal with us. And this is something that is so easy to do, it's thoughtful, and it costs a minimal amount of money. Let me show you what we do. We picked up these adorable Disney metal popcorn tins in Goodwill, and they were 99 cents a piece. I took the plastic off of Mickey just so you could see it, but they were absolutely brand new. So what we do is we always try to keep an eye out for an unusual container to present a gift in. What I'll do is just take some pretty tissue paper and I'll just push that right in here. I thought the red and white looked adorable. What's good about getting things like microwave popcorn, candy canes, cocoa, is that they come in packs of multiples. So you don't have to give the whole pack. You take out some popcorn. Let's put in several candy canes. We're going to put in two packages of hot chocolate. I don't know if any of you have tried the Zachary Thin Mints. We get these in the $1.25 store, the old Dollar Tree store. These are so good. Put a box of those in. What we'll do is just take a small gift card and it doesn't have to be a lot. And we'll just stick that in as well. Absolutely perfect. It looks adorable. It's festive. And you've said to someone, thank you. Thank you for having us into your home. Maybe someone isn't a chocolate lover. How about a jar of peanuts? That's a nutritious, fun treat. Again, the hot cocoa, the popcorn, the small gift card, and you have a lovely gift. Again, if you buy in multiples and you break up the packages, you have several gift baskets you can make for minimal cost. You can look for any type of unique containers to present those type of little gifts in. A little gift card just enhances it even more. Just such a nice way to say thank you, or a nice way to say you're special to me. Believe me, we are not anti-gifts. 
I love gifts. Paul loves gifts. We love gifts. But we always try to encourage when we give gifts to make them personal, customize them to the person you're giving them to. And in this next segment, we are going to show you how I did that. I have a dear friend whose home is just decorated in country charm. I guess what you'd call the farmhouse look now. And this next segment is going to show you how we saved money on a personalized gift for her by just being patient and waiting for the perfect gift to come around. So we're gonna turn this camera around again and let's see what we found. This is part of a gift for a dear friend of mine. And I told her she can't watch this video, so hopefully she won't. She loves Debbie Mum. And we were at a church rummage sale. I saw these Debbie Mum dessert salad plates, four of them for $4. Let me just show you. They are literally brand new. They are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you can see they have never, ever even been used. So I thought that would make a lovely gift for her. Then at the same church sale, I found the two weather vane salt and pepper shakers that match this. The plates were $4 and these brand new, never used salt and pepper shakers were $2 to go with it. So for $6, I have six amazing, beautiful items that I know she will love and use. When I tell you to shop secondhand, I'm not telling you to go in and pick up some heavily used item, thrift stores, tag sales, estate sales, church rummage sales, have some of the most beautiful items that people got as gifts and just never wanted. Now I'm gonna show you something. Like I said, I paid $6 for the four plates and the two salt and pepper shakers. Let's do some screenshots of eBay and let me show you how much these exact items are selling for on eBay. Here are those same plates on eBay and I priced them lowest to highest. So we've got $28 with free shipping, $20.15 with $8.99 shipping, $24.95 with $15.70 shipping. Here are the salt and pepper shakers. I could only find two on eBay. One was priced $24.99 with $9 shipping. The other was $15.99 with $5.99 shipping. So I think we did really well. How about the difference in prices? Now I know eBay is super overpriced, but sometimes when you're looking for a custom gift for someone, a lot of people turn to Etsy and a lot of people turn to eBay to find that perfect custom gift. But the wonderful thing about these tag sales and church rummage sales and flea markets are those items are out there at a discounted price. So always keep your eyes open. And what I love is that these items were new. Somebody must have got them, didn't want them, and donated them. So that was to our benefit. There are so many beautiful gifts out there for people at a minimal cost. Now, another super gift we're gonna share with you is one that we are giving to my in-laws. Now, those of you who have been here with us for a while on the channel will know exactly what that is. But I am sure you wouldn't mind seeing this year's adaptation of it. Now this is a gift idea we've been doing for Paul's parents for several years now, and it is a huge hit. What I do is I just print out a monthly calendar that I find on the internet for free. This was a birthday calendar. It came with little lines for you to put people's birthdays in, but I use it for their monthly meals. So every month what I do is make a meal for them throughout the year. So January, they're gonna get baked CD, bread, salad, and dessert. February will be beef stew, bread, dessert, chicken, potato salad, veggies, dessert, and so on. And I try to plan the meals 
in accordance with the weather. So come the hot weather, I'm going to give them a cold salad platter. For July, August will be hero sandwiches with pasta salad. And as the months get cooler, we're going to go back chicken cutlets, Swedish meatballs, lasagna. And what we do is we give them this, and then we give them a gift certificate to the local grocery store that they shop at. Between the gift certificate and the meals, it's just a practical gift for them. They don't need a thing. But this way, they know they have a delicious meal, home-cooked, coming every month, and I always make enough for them to have several meals out of it. So this is just another great idea if you have someone who is hard to, to give a gift to at the holiday season. I can't tell you how much joy those meals bring to Paul's parents. Now, if that is too much for you or that's too overwhelming to do a whole meal, how about a dessert a month? Or how about a bread a month? Or a soup a month? There are so many ways you can customize those type of gifts to the individual. And that's a gift that is consumable. It's not going to sit on a shelf and collect dust. This is something that people can eat, enjoy, and think of you. And it encourages you to see someone once a month to at least deliver that handmade gift. Now, of course, you have to keep into consideration food allergies and dietary restrictions if you do a gift like that. But once you know that, what a wonderful, thoughtful way to bless someone. You know this old-fashioned holiday would not be complete without at least browsing through one of our favorite vintage holiday cookbooks. Another thing to look out for while you're at these tag sales and flea markets and church rummage sales are vintage holiday cookbooks. This is one of my favorites, the Better Homes and Gardens holiday cookbook, and this is from 19. 59. It showcases every special occasion. So everything from birthdays to holidays to table setting tips. As you can see, there's New Year's, Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So we're just looking at Christmas. And what it does is it just gives you simple, easy tips on how to cook and how to decorate. And things were much much simpler then. One of the gifts you know that Paul and I give every year are cookie trays. And as time has gone by, we have simplified the cookie trays. We don't make 12 cookies anymore. We'll make maybe three or four. But what a lovely gift. Just a simple basket filled with homemade treats. There are so many easy ways to present a gift like this. There are bread recipes, tons of cookie recipes. We always forget about everyone's favorite, homemade candy, fudge. There's fruitcake recipes. We may not have time or talent to make homemade marzipan on top of a fruitcake, but look at how beautiful that is, all the different marzipan fruits. But what we want to try to make the time to do is to slow down, create some homemade gifts if that is something that we enjoy doing. And there are tons of ideas for Christmas dinner, for Christmas salads. So this book is just a plethora of information. I guarantee just looking through the pages will slow you down, will bring into focus that old-fashioned holiday feeling that so many of us are trying to regain. So keep an eye out for these hidden frugal gems that you can find sometimes for under a dollar. And they will just enhance the holiday season in a good old fashioned, slow down kind of way. That book is just so much fun to browse through. Those pictures just pop at you and just give you that old fashioned nostalgic feeling. If you all would like, we can pick something out of that cookbook and make it. Let me know down below if you'd like to see us do a video on something like that. As with any vintage cookbook, you always want to use good common sense and our modern food safety procedures. This has been a really busy video, but I hope you are enjoying it as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. The last thing we're going to do is show you a little bit 
of our old fashion holiday decor. Our vintage Christmas ornaments, our Christmas decorations have been passed down for years. And they also have been found at a minimal cost at flea markets, at our tag sales, and thrift shop. And the only thing we bought this year to enhance the holiday decor, because I didn't want to buy anything, but I did find, and you'll see in the picture in a minute, little tiny bottle brush trees at the dollar store. Well, the dollar 25 store. And I thought they looked so cute with our little wintry scene. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So sit back, relax, and let us just show you a little home decor. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. Those are flameless candles. They're battery operated candles on our mantle. They're not real candles with flames. So no worry, please, we wouldn't do that. We hope you enjoyed this video. We loved making it. Let's just remember to try to keep the holidays simple, filled with all the joys of the season. Today's question of the day, what is your favorite holiday appetizer other than cream cheese with pepper jelly i hear that all the time share with us your absolute favorite finger food appetizer side dish something that is simple easy yet really delicious i know it will encourage us and i know it will encourage our viewers as well we thank you for taking this time to share with us we appreciate you so much for being here. We ask you to stay well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you.